This is the Chase Sapphire Reserve. And I've actually had this card for almost four years now. But in this video, I think this card is coming to an end and I'm actually thinking of canceling it. So in this video, we're gonna go over why I actually think I'm going to cancel it and what I'm gonna do instead. So welcome back to the channel and thanks for watching another video and let's get into it. So the Chase Sapphire Reserve has been a great card. I think I've had it since 2017 when the initial intro bonus came out for $100,000 and I've had the card ever since. I've gotten a lot of benefit from it and I'm quickly gonna run through all the different benefits that you could get if you're brand new. I still think that if this is your first time getting the Chase Sapphire Reserve, it might be worth it, but there are some other cards that might be worth it a little bit more instead of getting the reserve right off the bat. But if you don't know what the Chase Sapphire Reserve is, it's one of Chase's premium Sapphire cards that give you a lot of different benefits that I think are pretty worthwhile. First off being the $300 travel credit that basically gives you a credit for anything that you can use for travel, including hotels, Ubers, flights, and even tolls. It does 5X on flights when you purchase through the Chase Ultimate Portal, 10X on hotels and car rentals through that same portal, but more importantly, 3X on restaurants, and that's really about it. The other thing that's a huge benefit is you get 50% more redemption value when you use your points on Chase Travel Portal. So if you have a thousand points, that's $1,500 in actual value, but you have to use those points on the Chase Portal, which in my research can be a good minimum, but traveling to transfer partners usually is the best. So that's transferring from Chase directly to like United Airlines is where you'll actually get the most point valuation. And right now, if you sign up using my referral link, you can get 50,000 points after you spend the first $4,000 within the first three months, which is worth about $750 in travel points through Chase Travel Portal. But the reason why I'm actually thinking of canceling it is because the annual fee was $450, but it is now $550 a year. And my annual fee is about to actually come up. So I actually called pretty recently to try and cancel the card before the annual fee hit, but the customer service rep was actually really smart and let me know that my $300 travel credit actually resets in December and my annual fee hits in January. So potentially I could wait for the travel credit, the $300 travel credit to reset, spend the $300 and then cancel before the annual fee actually hit. So that was a small loophole and I'm really thankful to that customer service rep for letting me know, but I'm still thinking about canceling it unless Chase decides to send me like a $100 credit or so to offset the $550 annual fee. One thing is though, I do have a lot of Chase points and so I do have to figure out what I'm actually going to do with them. I do have many other Chase personal cards so it's not like I'm gonna lose them right off the bat. But if I cancel the Chase Reserve, I also don't have the Chase Preferred so I don't have a good way of transferring those points to other airline partners. So I have thought about getting the Chase Preferred and I was trying to get it when there was a historical high 100K point bonus but that has actually since gone away so I'd be shafting myself for, oh, I basically lost 40,000 points, give or take, if I were to sign up for the Chase Preferred currently. Chase does have a rule where you cannot receive a second Sapphire bonus within four years of receiving your first one. I've already passed that limit, but if you're in this same predicament, I would keep in mind on when you got the first Sapphire bonus first before getting a second Sapphire bonus. But I think that's what's gonna be my plan if Chase doesn't give me a $100 credit for the annual fee, I'm going to then product change it to a different credit card and then get the Chase Preferred, which is a lower fee, and then hit that bonus. Before, but before any of that, I'm actually currently in process of getting the Southwest Companion Pass bonus, which is 100K points, and that's gonna take me a few months to hit that spend. But at the end of the day, the reason why I'm canceling the Chase Sapphire Reserve is really because I can't afford the fee, and I just don't see any value of paying $550 for effective less value getting back. The other option is I may try and call Chase to see if they can adjust the annual fee once it hits, but I've heard in the past, Chase isn't necessarily as good at, at retention offers as Amex is. Yeah, thanks for watching this quick video on why I'm actually canceling the Chase Reserve in 2022 and what my plan is moving forward. Let me know your thoughts on if this is a good plan or if you have some edits to it, but, but this is probably what I'm going to do. Comment below if you have any thoughts or questions on credit cards, I'd love to hear your thoughts. 
All right, guys. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.